They call it the hard clay. The legendary house of power. Just an hour north of the Big Apple lives a stage for heat and metal. Speedway's 100-year reign has given rise to champions. The racing, it was the best. Red Hearn wins the Conquest 97! He was very intense. Every Saturday night, they're summoned to test their wits. You gotta keep on thinking. Build something different. And guts. When Danny wants to pass you, you kind of know it, don't you? You know, when you get on track in your home and I, your friendship kind of goes out the window. You could be instantly taken out of it. Rivalry. It was unbelievable to watch. Jerry was a little bit rough. You didn't give him an inch. Buzzy was real calm. Librarian. That's what I called him the librarian. Decades of tradition. We were rock stars, man. Wherever we went, there was a lot of fans. That's the insanity that that place was. It was some crazy times. With a start of the engine, 100 years of legacy quickly turns to the present. I think the future is looking really bright for the sport. Superman is here, Matt Shepard. Sir Friesen, he's a whole nother world. He's an animal. This is Dirt Modified. This is Orange County. This is 100 years. Orange County, New York, home of black dirt. This richly organic soil harvests some of the best onions in America, just 60 miles north of New York City. The same soils and landscape are also home to turf grass sod farmers, yielding acres of green used for sporting arenas and fields across the country. Rich in agriculture and prosperous in blue shale resources, the lands of Orange County are strong and proven to stand the test of time. And in Middletown, New York, it's a different kind of dirt that has a special history. The Orange County Fair Speedway has now provided dirt racing entertainment for 100 years. But the history dates back even further. Built in 1857 and originally called the Ogden Track, Middletown was home to a half-mile horse racing venue that drew crowds from throughout the tri-state area. The track dates back as a horse track, and it was named after a horse. His name was Harry Clay. So it was called the Harry Clay Oval. A couple years ago, I found out that Harry Clay is buried right outside the fair office. As the years passed and the fairgrounds' popularity grew, auto enthusiast George Martin began to lobby for automobile racing at the track. After a couple of years of convincing the board of directors, the race was on, as the first scheduled race began on August 15th of 1919. America was getting excited about motor racing. Ten cars were entered and a crowd of 5,000 gathered to watch Jim Benedict in his Duesenberg special past the checkered flag, becoming the first winner in Middletown history. The car that won the first race here in 1919 still exists. From that day on, races would commence once a year. The 20s was owned by Ira Vale with four wins in that decade, and Bob Saul topped the 30s with three wins in less than 10 years. You had to be a little bit of a daredevil to race back then, hurtling along at 100 miles an hour with nothing but goggles and nerve. Soon after, 
the track was rebuilt and lengthened to what it still is today, five-eighths of a mile. Portions of this racetrack are incredibly soft and tacky, and other portions of this racetrack are more traditional to Middletown, hard, slick, and smooth. <laughs> In 1924, a man by the name of Joe Coates brought in clay from Finnan's Pond in the neighboring town of Goshen. This clay had unique properties. It was known for being extremely hard, yet soft enough not to damage the hooves of the racehorses, thus coining the name, the hard clay. It's been known as the hard clay forever. When you walked across the racetrack back in the, those days, when the races were over and the track was run in from all the cars racing all night, it would still suck your shoes off. It was that tacky. The surface appeared to be so rough and hard, but yet you can go out there and race on it, and you could be too wide, and there was grip. Part of the reason was was there was you know a lot of grit in the track, which creates grip. So speeds were really, really fast. When you're comparing it to other tracks, it's a fast racetrack. The sport gained popularity as these yearly races brought upwards of 25,000 people in attendance. But racing came to a sudden halt in 1942 as the U.S. went to war, and government-sanctioned rations were placed on fuel, metal, and other vital war resources. Although the fairgrounds was operational, the Speedway had to shut down during the U.S.'s involvement in World War II. But as the war came to an end, racing in Orange County was revitalized. After World War II, the midgets took off, and they were running seven nights a week, including the fifth mile track that they put on the infield here. Midget racing, especially after World War II, was hot, it was the thing. I mean, you'd pack a house with a midget race. Later that year, in 1946, the track would be renamed to Victory Speedway. For me, it's been Victory Speedway. That's what it was back in the 50s. I have a ticket for Victory Speedway. That's what it used to be called. Um, I know we had a, a football field in the middle of the track at one time, and obviously everybody knows uh, you know, Victory Speedway, with, where we had the, the short track inside. As the popularity of racing continued to climb, in 1949, the stock car was born, and the first feature race took place. Overnight, practically, somebody started racing stock cars, and midgets went from seven nights a week to once every two weeks if they were lucky. They just completely faded out. Stock cars took over. Stock cars, which were very similar to what was driving down a road, as opposed to the open wheel cars that have been running there for years and years. There wasn't so much distinction then between street cars and race cars. The difference was all in the men who drove them. Most of the parts came from junkyards. Of course, there was some speed equipment in motors and so on. The cars have usually been rescued from junkyards, but the motors are good and the excitement guaranteed. If you go to stock car races once or twice and you don't have a favorite, you're not really gonna be into it that much. Once you latch on to the guy that you like his style or you like the color of his car or anything like that, once you latch on to somebody and you become a fan of somebody, it makes it much more interesting. I had asked this girl out to go to the movies and she said no. And when I was walking away, she goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. How about if we take a rain check and we go to stock car races? So I said, where's the stock car races? She said, Middletown. Well, I've been going ever since. Traditions at the fairgrounds were being established and the archives were being inked. This place just oozes with history. All the great drivers on dirt have raced here, and many of them have won here. Look at everything that's happened since 1919. Look at our champions. Look at the guys who've come through our gates. Al Unser, Bobby Allison, Mario Andretti raced at Orange County Fair Speedway. It doesn't get any bigger than that. When you sit back and think about it, it's truly amazing. Dirt track racing as we know it today was slowly starting to take shape. The cars were loud, competition was fierce. And as the 40s came to a close, the culture at the Orange County Fairgrounds was about to change forever. <laughs>